The main hydraulic system is largely automatic and consists of four independent subsystems. Number one and number two are the main systems. Number three is a backup system to power the elevators in the event of a problem with the main systems. And number four is a manual system for alternate extension of the main gear. The main hydraulic systems are controlled from this panel. With pressure and quantity for systems one, two and three permanently displayed on the lower part of the right pilot's MFD. The alternate system has a hand pump and a reservoir. The hand pump lever is stowed here on the right pilot's aft bulkhead and connected here at the landing gear alternate extension panel. We'll cover its operation in the landing gear module. Now let's look at the main systems in more detail. System number one and number two have their own reservoir in the engine nacelle and their own engine-driven hydraulic pump. Normal system pressure is 3,000 psi. In addition, system number one has an electrically operated standby pump. A power transfer unit, PTU, driven by number one, operates automatically or can be selected manually to transfer hydraulic pressure, not fluid, from number one to number two in the event of loss of pressure in number two. System number one powers the flaps, lower power control unit, PCU, of the rudder, the outboard PCUs of the elevators, the inboard roll spoilers, and the main wheel brakes and anti-skid control valve. System number two powers the upper PCU of the rudder, the center PCUs of the elevators, the landing gear, nose wheel steering, the outboard roll spoilers, and the emergency and parking brakes. From the consumers, hydraulic fluid is returned to the reservoirs. A priority valve, normally open, closes if pressure drops below 2,100 psi in system number one. This shuts off power to the flaps and PTU, maintaining pressure for the other number one consumers. Isolation valves in both systems perform a similar function to the priority valve. If fluid level in a system gets too low, the valve closes. For system one, the valve isolates the inboard roll spoiler, normal brakes and anti-skid system, leaving the rudder, elevators, flaps and the PTU powered, and for system two, the valve isolates the landing gear, nose wheel steering, outboard roll spoilers, and emergency and park brakes, just leaving the rudder and elevators powered. If there's an engine fire, pulling the pull fuel hydraulic off handle closes a firewall shutoff valve and stops the flow of hydraulic fluid to the burning engine. Hydraulic system number three is not connected to systems one and two. It has its own reservoir, DC motor driven pump, accumulator and isolation valve and is connected to the inboard power control units of the elevators. If the flight control's ECU detects loss of hydraulic pressure in system number one or number two, the isolation valve opens and the DC motor driven pump starts to operate to supply 2600 to 3250 PSI to the accumulator and to the inboard elevator PCUs. Number three system also powers the elevators if both engines fail or if you manually open the isolation valve. Note that the DC motor driven pump is powered by the standby battery. If it operates for more than 60 seconds on ground or if number three pressure is too low, the number three standby hydraulic pump caution comes on. Hydraulic system number four is for alternate main landing gear extension. 
It locks the main gear down when System 1 and 2 hydraulic power are not available. The alternate system has its own emergency hydraulic reservoir in the right side of the nose wheel well. A hand pump and emergency selector valve are operated from the landing gear alternate extension panel in the floor. Opening the panel closes the emergency selector valve. By attaching a hand pump handle, you can then pressurize the reservoir to lock the main gear down after partial extension. Operation will be covered in more detail in the landing gear module. Let's look more closely at the hydraulic controls and indicators. This is the normal display on the right side MFD with pressure readings marked at 0 to 4000 PSI and quantity in the three systems as a percentage. Minimum quantity for dispatch is about 50% in all three systems. If an indicator is invalid, the marker and scale are removed. If one of the multifunction displays is switched off or is inoperative, the remaining shows a more compact composite hydraulics format. White dashes indicate an invalid reading. You can also select the standby pump on manually. When operating, system 1 pressure should be approximately 2900 PSI. Pressing the switch light again stops the pump. The power transfer unit control switch light operates similarly. On when the PTU comes on to restore pressure in system number 2 and off when back to normal. You can also select it on and off manually. Normal procedure is to select both the standby pump and the PTU on for takeoff and landing and off on the climb checklist. The guarded switch light indicates that number 3's isolation valve is open and the accumulator is powering the elevators due to a loss of pressure in systems 1 and 2. System 3 pressure when operating should be between 2600 and 3250 PSI. Like the other switch lights, you can select it on and off manually. But you should not select System 3 if System 1 or 2 is powered. This will trigger the elevator pressure caution light. The hydraulic system uses these caution lights. For fluid hot, monitor pressure and quantity. For standby pump hot, Switch off the standby pump in system number one at the hydraulics control panel and also monitor pressure and quantity. The number three standby pump is the DC motor pump that engages when systems one and two are unpowered. If this light comes on, it indicates that the pump has been running for more than 60 seconds on ground or that system three pressure is below 900 PSI. Inform maintenance before the next flight. Elevator pressure illuminates when number three system and number one or two are powering the elevators. This light indicates low quantity in the number one system, causing its isolate valve to close, leaving the rudder, elevators and flaps powered. Low quantity in number two isolates various services, leaving the rudder and elevators powered. Finally, these lights indicate hydraulic pressure below 1800 PSI. For system number one, you should switch on the standby pump to increase pressure. And for number two, switch on the PTU to transfer pressure from number one. In both situations, monitor pressure and quantity and the isolate caution light. 